Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and take a look at some more unit conversions. So we have 42.3 centimeters into millimeters. So this is one of those exercises where it's really good to look at our unit conversion cheat sheet. And if you don't know what that is, it should be on Schoology for you. So one centimeter is going to be equivalent to 10 millimeters. So all we're going to do is multiply this number by 10. We get 423 millimeters. All right, the next one is PM, which is picometers into meters. So again, it's going to be best if we look at our sheet. And when we look there, we'll see that a picometer is a lot smaller than a meter. One pico is equivalent to 10 to the negative 12th meters. That means that we're going to have to take our picometers and multiply them by 10 to the negative 12th to find out how many meters we have. So if we were to write this, we would have 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 zeros, 6, 2. That's one way to write it. The easier way is scientific notation, which you guys should have learned about last year, which is just 6.2 e to the negative 12th meters. Next one, we have 21 kilometers or kilometers is equivalent to how many meters? Well, we know that one kilometer should be equal to 1,000 meters. So all we're going to do is take this number, multiply it by 1,000, 21,000 meters. Next, we have 0 0.023 millimeters is equivalent to how many centimeters? We already did this up above, but I'll just write it again. One centimeter is equivalent to 10 millimeters. So we're gonna take this number up here and divide it by 10. So we end up with 0 0.0023 centimeters. Next, we have 214 micrometers is equivalent to how many meters? Well, we know that one micrometer is equivalent to 10 to the negative six meters. Therefore, we can write this number, which is going to be pretty small, or we can do what we did before and use scientific notation, which is the easier option. Scientific notation means that we're going to have 214 micrometers times 10 to the negative 6. So we would take our decimal and slide it over two spots, 1, 2, and that would lower this from negative 6 to negative 4. So 2.14 e to the negative 4th meters. And that should give us our answer. Next, we have 570 nanometers. So again, still sticking with the small trend. One nanometer is equivalent to 10 to the negative ninth meters. But we don't have meters here. We have kilometers. And we know, just like we had over there, that one kilometer is equivalent to 10 to the third meter. So lots and lots of numbers and math, but the important thing to note here is that nanometers is small, kilometers is big. Therefore, our number should be very, very small because we're going from a small unit of measurement to a big unit of measurement. So if I were to figure this out, I would do 570 times 10 to the negative ninth in order to get to meters but then I need meters into kilometers. So I'm gonna change this just so that it is easier for us to understand. So one meter is equivalent to 10 to the negative third kilometer. So 570 times 10 to the negative ninth times 10 to the negative third. That just gives us a ginormous number. So again, if our decimal's here, we're gonna slide it over two spots. So we get 5.7 and then E we would have negative nine plus negative three, which is negative 12, but we slid it over two spots. So it's just E to the negative 10th. All right, now that we're done with those very, very small measurements, let's compare some measurements here. This should be a lot easier. We have milligrams, micrograms, kilograms, and milligrams again. So the first step is probably to get all these to the same uh, units. And since we have two milligrams already, we might as well convert the other ones into milligrams as well. So our first step is 
1021 micrograms into milligrams. So in order to do that, we need to figure out how many micrograms are in a milligram. So again, we can take a look at our unit conversion cheat sheet. So it looks like one milligram or one microgram, let's write it this way, is equivalent to 10 to the negative third milligrams. And then let's do the same thing for kilograms here. We would find out that one kilogram is equivalent to 10 to the six milligrams. All right, so this is super easy. All we have to do is just multiply our numbers against those. So 1,021 times 10 to the negative third, that's gonna give us 1.021 milligrams. And then if we do the same thing up here, we have 0 0.0000006 times 10 to the six. So if you multiply all those through, you end up with 0 0.6 milligrams. Therefore, if we were to put these in order from smallest to largest, our kilograms would be the smallest. So I'll just write that here, kilograms. And then the next smallest would be our 0 0.31 milligrams. And then after that would be 1,021 micrograms. And then our largest would be 11.6 milligrams. So kind of tough problem because we have to convert everything to the same units. But after we figure out what the conversion ratios are, it's not too bad. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at these quantities and convert them again. So we have feet into meters. This one should be a lot easier because we've done this conversion before. You know that 3.28 feet is equivalent to one meter. And if we have feet over here, 353 feet, that means that we need feet on the bottom in our equation. And we would put our conversion of 3.28 and one meter. Therefore, 353 feet divided by 3.28. 28 feet is going to give us how many meters we have. And that is going to be roughly around 107 meters. Next, we can do the same thing for centimeters cubed and meters cubed. We know that there are a hundred centimeters in one meter, but since it's cubed, we're going to have to cube all this stuff. We've said it before. We'll say it again. Therefore, if we cube it, we're going to end up with a million centimeters cubed is equivalent to one cubic meter. So when we go to convert this, we have cubic centimeters on top. That means that we're gonna to need to put our million cubic centimeters for the conversion on the bottom. Doing so, we end up with five divided by a million, which is going to give us a pretty small number, but I'm gonna cheat again, put it in scientific notation, five e negative six. And again, if you don't know what this E means, just a nice refresher for you, E is just equal to 10 to the something power. Okay, that's what that stands for. So E stands for 10 to the blank. And then this number negative six would go right there. So 10 to the negative six power. Next one is two inches into millimeters. This one's gonna be a little bit trickier because we don't just have an inches to millimeters. We do have an inches to centimeters that we talked about before, so we could use that, I guess, to kind of cheat. And we know that one inch is equivalent to 2.54 centimeters. And we know that one centimeter is equivalent to 10 millimeters. So doing that, we can go ahead and solve this problem. So our steps would be two inches on top and then we would have inches on the bottom here, so one inch, and 2.54 centimeters on top. I'm gonna really take a shortcut here, and instead of saying one inch is equivalent to 2.54 centimeters, I'm gonna combine these last two steps and say one inch is actually equivalent to 25.4 millimeters, okay? If you're unsure of what I did here, I just took my centimeter to millimeter conversion and put it up here. 
So every one centimeter is equivalent to 10 millimeters. Therefore, I just multiply this by 10. 25.4 millimeters. Doing so, I just multiply my way through and I get 50.8 millimeters. All right, so we have 1,000 meters squared over days, and we want to convert that into feet squared over years. So we know that one meter is equivalent to 3.28 feet. So we just need to square both of those. So one meter squared is equal to 3.28 squared, which is 10.76. I'll just round a little bit here. Uh, feet squared. Okay. And then the next is from days to years, which is pretty easy. We should know, hopefully, that there are 365 days in one year. And that's assuming that it's not leap year, obviously. So our first step is we have meters squared on top here. We need meters squared on the bottom. I'm running out of space, but I'll do my best to try to put this in here. So we have 1,000 meters squared, and then that means meters squared on the bottom and feet squared on top. 10.76 feet squared. Okay, so now that we have that, we can just multiply our way through. We get 1,000 times 10.76, and then the next step would be that we have days on the bottom. So we need days on top, so then I would multiply by 365 days over one year. 365. My final answer is going to be kind of big here, and it should be around 3,927,400. Alright, so I would say that we made it through the tough stuff, but I'd be lying if I said that because there is a lot of other stuff that's a lot more difficult coming up. So bear with me as we continue on this journey. Okay. So this question is a little funky. It says, use the table of values above to solve the following problem. Mr. Spock ran five times 10 to the negative 12th parsecs in 0 0.04 Kardashians. For his great feat, he was awarded two Warhols during which his Twitter followership increased to four Whedons. All right, first thing it wants us to do is find Spock's speed in meters per second. So for starters, we need to find out which one of these is talking about his speed. Well, it sounds like how fast he's running is probably talking about his speed. So it says that he ran at 5 times 10 to the negative 12 parsecs. And he did it in 0 0.04 Kardashians. So I'm going to use as much space as I can below because I have a feeling that this is going to take a lot of space. So let's go ahead and write that down here. 5 e negative 12 and that's parsecs over and that would be 0 0.04 kardashians i'm just going to abbreviate with card okay it wants me to get into meters per second so first thing i'm going to do is look at my conversions up above it says one parsec is equal to 3.0 lots of digits times 10 to the 16th meters and one Kardashian is equal to that many days. So let's start with the easy one, which should be the parsecs. I have parsecs on top here. I'm gonna put parsecs on the bottom here. So one parsec. And that is equivalent to 3.085667578 e to the 16th meters, okay. So I'm halfway there because I already have meters and I got meters here, so I'm good. Parsecs cancel out. Now I gotta go from Kardashians over to seconds. It says one Kardashian is equivalent to 72 days. So Kardashians on the bottom there means Kardashians on the top here. And 72 days. This is pretty good now because I got rid of Kardashians, so all I have is days. If I want to get rid of days, I can kind of take a little shortcut here. And I know that one day is equivalent to 24 hours. And there are 3,600 seconds in an hour. 
So to take my shortcut, I would just do 24 times 3,600, which really tells me that there are 86,400 seconds in one day. And again, that's kind of taking a shortcut. It's not cheating because I know all that stuff. I'm just condensing steps. So days cancel out. So I have meters on top, seconds on the bottom, everything I need. So all I really need to do here is just multiply my way through to get my answer. Doing so, I find out that Spock speed in meters per second should be about 0 0.62 meters per second. All right, one down, two more to go. It wants me to find the total time that Spock ran and the time he was famous in hours. All right, so this sounds a little bit more difficult. So for starters, I need the units that are talking about time. So when we talk about him running, it's giving it to me in Kardashians. So this is gonna be one of my units for time. And then when it talks about how long his award was, it says it took two Warhols. So this is also talking about time here. So first thing, let's go ahead and convert the Kardashians into time. And they want it in hours now, because why not? All right, so if I have 0 0.04 Kardashians, I gotta go ahead and get that into hours. Since I have Kardashians on top here, I want them on the bottom here. So one Kardashian is equal to 72 days. I have days on top there, means I need days on the bottom here. One days or one day is equivalent to 24 hours. Okay, so I've taken my Kardashians and converted that into hours, I'm good. The next step, is to take my Warhols and convert that into hours. It said it took him two Warhols. So I'm gonna add this and I have two Warhols, which I'll just write as WA. And it also tells me that one Warhol, so since I have Warhols on top here, I'm gonna put Warhols on the bottom here, is equivalent to 15 minutes. And then the last step would be going from minutes to hours. So minutes on top means minutes on the bottom means hours on the top here. One hour, 60 minutes. Okay. So Kardashians cancel out, days cancel out. I'm just left with hours. And then I'm going to add my Warhols that cancel out with my minutes that cancel out and just left with hours. Go ahead and add all that stuff up and you should get somewhere around 69.6 .6 hours. Okay. Last one is letter C and I have absolutely no space, so I'm gonna write it in this space up above and hope for the best. What was the rate of growth of Mr. Spock's Twitter followership in followers per second? So it said that he increased to four Whedons, and it wants me to get followers per second, and it tells me that a Whedon is half a million Twitter followers. So this actually isn't that bad, and I should have enough space for it. So since Whedon's is really followers, I'm gonna put Whedon's on top. So for Whedon's, WH, over how long it took, which was two Warhols, two WA. All right, so my first step is to go from one of these into followers or seconds. The easier one is to go into followers because it says one Whedon is half a million Twitter followers. So Whedon's are on top there, which means one Whedon goes on the bottom here, and that's going to give me 500,000 followers. And then I have Warhols on the bottom here. I need Warhols on top here. So one Warhol we said was equivalent to 15 minutes. And then lastly, it wants it in seconds. So I have minutes on the bottom there, any minutes on top here. One minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So Whedon's cancel out, Warhol's cancel out, minutes cancel out, I'm just left with followers over seconds. Multiply everything through, I get 1,111 followers per second. Alrighty guys, let's take a look at what I believe to be one of the hardest unit conversion or dimensional analysis problems that we will do in this class. So this says, which of the following equations are dimensionally correct? Show the work that verifies this. 
So we have tons of units, tons of symbols, and tons of dimensions here. And in order to figure this out, we need to convert one side of our equation and the other side of our equation and see if they match each other. So let's start with number one. So number one is V2, and V2 just means velocity two. And we'll get to this equation later on. It's one of the first equations that we really look at, and we do a lot of it during our kinematic units. So V stands for velocity, and velocity is measured in length over time. So L over T. And then on the other side, we also have velocity, which is L over T. And we have that multiplied by T. T is just time. And then we add acceleration. Acceleration is measured in L over T squared. Okay. So we can try to simplify this, but we can already tell that things aren't going to work out. But let's go ahead and simplify it as much as we can. We have L over T times T, so those T's cancel out. So T cancels out with T, and we're just left with L plus L over T squared. We can tell that L over T does not equal L plus L over T squared. So that is not correct. So these equations might look like the ones that we're going to use, but they're actually slightly different or tweaked in order for them not to work out. So the first one does not work. Let's take a look at number two. So we have VF, which is just L over T, and that's going to be equal to V1 plus V2, which is L over T plus L over T. All of that is divided by two, but we want to make this look nicer, so instead of dividing it all by 2, we're just going to multiply the 2 over here. So we have 2 times L over T. Therefore, if we combine L over T plus L over T, we get 2L over T. That means that the left side of our equation is equal to the right side of our equation, so this is dimensionally correct. Let's take a look at number 3. Number 3, we have X is equal to V times T squared plus 1 half AT. So this one is kind of confusing, but we'll take our time with it. X is just L, because X is a measurement of distance or length. And that's going to be equal to V. V, we know, V is L over T. And then times T squared. Plus 1 half. And then A, A is L over t squared times t. Okay. So the first step is just to simplify what we have here. L over t times t squared just gives us lt plus 1 half l over t squared times t would give us 1 half times l over t. All of that is equal to l. We can see that these two things are not going to equal each other. All right, let's take a look at number four now. We're just going to work our way down. Number four is V squared. So V is L over T, but that would be both of these squared. So L squared T squared is equal to, and then again, we have V squared here. So that would be L squared over T squared plus two times A. A we know is L over T squared and then times x squared, x we know as l squared. Okay, so if we simplify some of this, we should see, but I mean, we can already tell that this is not going to work out. We see that l squared over t squared makes sense, but we need this guy to also give us something similar to that, which he isn't. We have l times l squared, that's going to give us l cubed, which means that it's not going to work out for us. Unfortunately, this is not dimensionally correct either. All right, number five. Number five is x equals one half v times t squared plus a times t. x we know is just fancy for distance or length, which is equal to one half v, which is l over t, times t squared plus a, a is l over t squared times t. Okay. 
So let's figure this one out. We have just L on the left-hand side in order for it to be correct. And L over T times T squared, that's going to give us LT plus L over T squared times T, that's going to give us L over T. Unfortunately, this is not going to work out as we have one part of this is L times T and the other is L over T. So our units are not correct here. Alrighty, let's see if we can find another one. So far, only two was the correct equation. So let's take a look at number six now. So number six, we have F equals MA. In other words, this is saying force is equal to mass times acceleration. So force is M times L over T squared. And we know M is M because M stands for mass. And A is L over T squared. All right, so this one's super easy because we can just see ML over T squared, M times L over T squared. This guy works out. Cool. Found another one that works. Number seven. So for number seven, we have X equals one half AT squared, where X is L. One half is one half. A is L over T squared. And T squared is just T squared. Therefore, the T squareds cancel out, and we're just left with L is equal to one half L which works out for us because we can just ignore this one half because all we're concerned about are the units and the units are both L in this case. If this was like L squared, then we couldn't ignore the squared, but the one half is just some number times those units. So that's fine for us to just ignore it here. So number seven checks out. Take a look at number eight. Number eight is E equals one half MV squared. We're E stands for energy, so that would be M times L squared over T squared. And they're saying that should be equal to one half MV squared. So I'm just gonna ignore the one half because that guy doesn't matter. So the M right here, and then the V, we know V is just L over T. We can see that this doesn't work out because this is L squared T squared. This is just L and T, not gonna work for us. Number nine, so for number nine here, we have E equals M times A times X. And we said E is ML squared over T squared. M is just M. A we know as L over T squared and X as L. So if we simplify this right hand side, we get M L squared over T squared, which shows us that number nine does check out. All right. Last one should be number 10. Number 10, we have V is equal to the square root of FX divided by M. So this is, again, kind of a confusing and complicated one because we got a lot of variables here. We got a square root, but let's just do what we've been doing. V is L over T, and we have the square root of F times X over M. F, we said, is M L over t squared. X is just L. So I'm going to multiply another L in here. So we have this and then again divided by M. Okay. So therefore, if we want to simplify this bad boy, let's start with the L's on top. We get simplified. It would be the square root of M L squared over t squared and then divided by M. This M on the bottom goes up top, which really makes it M squared up here. So we have the square root of M squared, L squared, divided by T squared. Since all those things are squared, we can simplify that, and we just end up with M, L over T, because we square root all those. Unfortunately, though, we just need L over T here. So this does not check out either. All right, last question we got is number 11. Number 11 says the spring is hanging down from the ceiling and an object of mass M is attached to the free end. The object oscillates up and down and the time T required for one complete up and down oscillation is given by the equation T equals two pi square root of M over K, where K is known as a spring constant. What must be the dimension of K for this equation to dimensionally be correct? So this is exactly what we did above. It's just a lot of words and we're trying to sound confusing. So T is equal to 2 pi square root 
m over k. So let's start by getting rid of this squared root so that we don't need to deal with it anymore. So to get rid of this, we're going to square this guy, square here, square here, square here. So that's going to give us t squared is equal to 4 pi squared times m over k. All right, now that we got rid of that, we can go ahead and isolate k and get k by itself because we want to figure out what the units should be for k. So to get k by itself, I'm going to multiply k over to the other side. So I end up with k is equal to 4 pi squared times m over t squared. So what I did here, in case you didn't catch it, was I multiplied this k over here, and then I took this t and divided it over there. So we're going to go ahead and ignore anything that doesn't have units. So we're going to ignore the 4 and the pi here and just pay attention to the m over t squared. We know m is a measurement of mass, and mass in physics is measured in kilograms. So we have kilograms in place of m over t. t is a measurement of time, and time in physics is measured in seconds over seconds squared. Therefore, the units of k should be kilograms over seconds squared.